to uh, get together and uh, talk about you know what what he wanted from the position and I felt like I could do that and he believed in me uh, he had a, you know, a lot of friends of mine that called him and said you know said I was a I was a really good coach and I, I thank those guys you know but it's, I just want to be here to help this team get to a championship because this is this is what it's all about. Was it stressful just, I mean, not knowing or wondering if you would be retained? Like, how, how was that process like in the interview? It's always stressful, right? I mean, uh, being a coach in the National Football League is always stressful because it's, it's year to year. It's kind of like being a player, you know, so it's year to year. Uh, you know, only thing you can do is go out and do your best each and every year and, uh, you know, and, and put put forth a great effort to help the team uh, and be a, a great team player at, on, the, on the coaching side and then get your guys to play well, you know, and have great communication with your guys. So I think, uh, you know, me, myself, being a former player, understands that it's, it's year to year, day to day, and knowing how to communicate with, you know, with, with other people helped me out, you know, just being a, being a former player. You talk about your guys. I talked to KJ last week. He said they went to bat for you. Just what does that mean? The, the guys clearly wanted you back and kind of made that known. You know what? It it meant a lot to me. I mean, uh, you know, and I called them all and said, "You guys didn't have to do that." You know, I think uh, you know my resume would have spoke for itself. And if it didn't, you know, it was just part of part of the process because you know, in the, in this in this coaching business, you got to do your job, and then hopefully other people see it and see how hard you work. But I appreciate all those guys going to bat for me. Uh, it shows you what kind of room we have. You know, we, we take care of each other. Uh, we look out after each other. We, we make sure that it's a family in there. And that's, that's how we feel. Coach, I guess that being said, obviously there's a new coaching staff, a new offensive system, but how beneficial is it to have a lot of carryover on offense and especially within your group? It's, it's great uh, because you got a quarterback that's somewhat been through this system you know, and uh, understand some of the things and then you got you got a, a group of guys in my room that have played with the quarterback the quarterback understands how how they play he loves how they play they love how he plays so that chemistry right there kind of puts you ahead of a lot of a lot of a lot of teams that are having coaching changes how are you managing? You're talking about the family and, and everybody's on the same page. But man, that's a crowded room with a lot of talent. There's only going to be so many spots. <laughs> you know, I, I tell guys all the time, let football handle football. You know, and it will handle football. Uh, football will handle football because when you get out on the grass and compete, the cream always rises to the top. I know it's an old saying, but it does. And, you know, it happens. I mean, when we, and I tell guys this all the time, you know, that's down the line, that's probably had a great camp. You know, you're playing for a job in the National Football League, not just for the Minnesota Vikings. You know, and if you go out and play the way we're, we're coaching you to play and the numbers just don't fit right, you'll find a job in this league. I mean, because it, it'll be it'll be seen on, on film. You guys have a lot of respect for you. I do. I enjoy. I enjoy being around those guys. You know, I enjoy uh, giving back to those guys because I was fortunate enough to have a coach give back to me uh, a lot of football, and it was it's my job, my duty to give it back to the, to the younger. You know, and pay it forward, as they say. You know, but you know what? We. I always tell them this: if you're not smiling on this grass, you're not having a good day. When you're smiling, that means you're on, mentally on every every rep you're supposed to be on and you're making the catches that you're supposed to be making and you're busting your butt, hustling to make the play for the next guy. So if, if you're down here with your head shaking and frowning up, that means you're not having a good day and you gotta find a way to change that some way, somehow. Justin, what are the next steps for a guy like Justin who's set records in his first two seasons? Continue to get better. I mean, set, set more goals. I mean, each year is a new year. I tell them that all the time. I tell everybody that. Each year is a new year. Don't rest on your laurels. Come out and, and, and be a different person. You know, I, I, I heard um, Troy Eggman say this one time. He said each year is a new year for him. Each year he's a different person. So he has to get, he has to be a better person. So 
you know, after 10 years, Trigman probably could have just sat there and been the same Trigman and everybody would have said, yeah, but now, you know, he, he would say, you know, the next year is a new year. It's like year one for me. And I, I say that to those guys every day in there, you know, this is a new year. You know, why not you? Why not you be uh, set, set the record for uh, yards, catches in a year? Why not you? You know, what you did last year was good. Now let's be great. Listening to you and JJ out there, it sounds like he's always asking you questions. How has your relationship with him over the past three years kind of grown? It's been great. I mean, I think, uh, you know, we, he understands me, I understand him. You know, and I try to I keep it simple. When you got a great player like that, you try to keep it simple and let his talent do the, do, do the work. I mean, you help him with things that he may have, may have not seen before and that I have probably seen in my career, and I've probably seen every look that he's seen, but you know, I try to help him through it. And once he gets it, he gets it so fast, and uh, he knows how to capitalize on it. So you know, his talent is, is there, and I just let, let his talent do the work. Hey, Keenan, you heard Wes Phillips mention that this offense might put more on the plates of the wide receivers, just in terms of maybe some unspoken adjustments of the line or stuff like that. What are your impressions of it, and just how do you go about teaching them? You know what, I love it because it, it puts more onus on us. We gotta, we gotta put that ownership on us and uh, to make the passing game work. So we gotta be dialed in. We gotta communicate. You know, I love it being a former receiver that that, that has a control. To, you know, it's like we are in control. You know, we gotta make, we gotta hear it, see it, run the right routes, and make the plays. So that, that puts more ownership on our table. Do you remember um, 